We have really seen oil prices trade sideways, despite the fact that we saw OPEC Plus announcing the surprise production cuts. So what will be driving prices in the next few months? Um, thank you, Sherry. Uh, so since OPEC Plus announced its production cuts earlier this month, oil prices have indeed eased slightly due to global uh, oil battery stock build. And that's pretty normal given that we are in a demand lull season when people don't typically travel that much. Um, I will highlight two key drivers of oil prices in the months ahead, and that is China's oil demand and OPEC Plus. Now, we are seeing signs that oil demand in China is strengthening. Road traffic levels in the larger cities are, are consistently higher uh, than the same time last year. And while jet fuel demand would only see most of its recovery in the second half of this year, uh, air tickets and schedules are suggesting that there's a lot of pent-up air travel demand in the country. Um, Asia as a whole will make up for most, a large majority of the oil demand growth this year. Uh, and so far, things are looking very positive. Now to OPEC Plus, uh, their production cuts uh, will come into effect uh, from next month. And uh, we expect, uh, unlike the previous rounds of quota cut, we expect most of it to translate into actual supply cuts. And that's because this time, uh, their quota cuts are only delegated to member countries which are able to deliver those cuts. And perhaps as importantly, uh, OPEC Plus is showing a strong sign of unity. Uh, they were able to discreetly uh, organize themselves and agree on uh, the production cut details, which are very significant production cuts uh, without uh, any uh, 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 leak to the media. And so this shows that OPEC Plus uh, could exercise uh, or could have a strong resolve in keeping oil prices supported in the months ahead. Uh, all in all, with OPEC Plus cuts and China's uh, strong strengthening demand, uh, we expect to see the global oil market balance flip into a supply deficit as early as May, right. if not definitely by June. And remain right. in the supply We've also deficit got a new report for when it every remaining month of the year. Right, and we've also got a new report when it comes to oil and gas trends. Can you tell us how we've seen the high oil price environment and how that's played out when it comes to divestments? Sure, so, we, so in this report we look at the nine major IOCs, mostly based in Europe and North America. So typically in a year where oil prices are low, uh, it would be followed by uh, higher divestments in the year after, so there's a one-year lag and vice versa. And that's probably the same uh, trend as CapEx as well. Another trend we are seeing is that oil companies are divesting more in their home countries, namely North America and Europe. And that's because they face more regulatory pressures in those regions, uh, which translates into higher cost of operations. Um, another interesting trend we are seeing is that um, all of these oil companies, our major IOCs, have 2050 net zero emissions target, which covers scope one and two uh, emissions globally. Uh, and, while, and they are still channeling most of these uh, divestment proceeds into fossil fuel projects. Uh, however, we are seeing a steady increase in capex towards uh, low carbon projects uh, annually since uh, 2019. Uh, and we expect the gap between uh, divestment proceeds and energy transition investments to narrow in the coming years so that uh, oil companies are imme are able to meet those uh, uh, emissions targets. And an interesting uh, trend that we've, uh, right. we've came across is that oil companies, particularly the European um, mm. IOCs, uh, are actually uh, looking more uh, into uh, selling their equity stakes and renewable projects that have passed the uh, development phase.